Okay, so for the Kickstarter project, we thought it might be a good idea if I actually go through the process and show you how I build up one of the illustrations. And because the next one is the, uh, I think you've seen the uh, sketch, which is this one, it's a toy toys. I'm going to show you how I basically build up the illustration into a finished form. Uh, I tend to work traditionally, so I work in pencil. Uh, to do a sketch, but sometimes, as you'll see here, I'll find a 3D model on SketchUp because uh, what happened was that there was a need for the uh, toy toys to be on a tricycle, so it was easier for me to try to find a reference image of a tricycle than actually to draw one uh, out of my head. And this is the classic tricycle that you see uh, used by kids. Uh, what I can do it's literally then in this mode, which is the outline mode, is to try to find a nice angle. I can also, where is the camera? I can also change the field of view so I can make it less wide angle and more wide angle to give it a more dynamic uh, view and everything. Okay. Once I find an angle that I like, like so for instance, I can then render it out as a uh, 2D graphic. Try school, for instance, put it on the desktop to show you what it looks like. Okay, so that's basically the starting point of this picture. I'll quit that. What I'm going to do is find you that. There it is. Okay, that's how it would be. And from that point on, it's, I could either print it out on paper and then draw test pieces to get the actual pose of the actual uh, toy toys correct, or I can do it digitally. Now, for this one, let's put it up. You'll see this is the tricycle. Uh, let me see if I can actually get away some of the actual. I actually had to alter the tricycle because it didn't actually fit properly. Uh, this is another thing, and the animals we use uh, don't sometimes tend to fit the actual item that needs to be put on. Tortoises aren't built to sit on tricycles, so what I have to do is either alter the actual tricycle a little bit uh, so it fits like I've actually lowered the actual position of the seat and I've changed this angle here on the stem okay that makes the tricycle still look like a tricycle but it also allows it to be kind of like a toy toys version of a tricycle I remove these tassely things that they tend to have because I didn't like them uh, and what I then do is I uh, build up test uh, views of the actual toy toys to see if I can get it fitting in the right place okay and it slowly goes up so you can put the arms in the legs this is another problem because of the sitting position of the toy toys the legs stretch quite a lot to fit onto the pedals uh, eventually after some time I can get it to work okay so what we did here is we actually then end up with the finished form I made it so I could get the actual legs to bend a little bit because obviously I've got the bend to do the actual rotation. The thing is as well, because it's not actually moving, there's some artistic license involved in this and I can actually make it so it looks more aesthetic than actual physically possible. Okay. Also, Steve has mentioned he always wa he wanted all these pictures to be a little bit more happy, so I, I found a reference image of a toy toy with his mouth open, I think it's that one. Yeah. So I use that as kind of a basis to do the head. Okay, and this is one thing I do as well, is I look for reference images that I could possibly use for parts of the actual toy toys. This one's not particularly good, but it go has a good picture of a leg extended, so I know what it looks like. Okay, and we just build it up like that. And I, I have them on the actual picture, so I can actually do close reference drawing from it. Okay, like so. And end up with a rough like so. What I do then is I basically compress all that down and place it onto a larger background plate which is what I'm going to be using for the actual let's just change this let's just lock this off see that's the title so basically if I cut everything out it's just like a folded piece of paper and this is my standard uh, background I use for all my animals sometimes you'll get a coloured background but it's easy to add a coloured background later and I'll show you how to do that okay 
but this with the title I'm going to call it Speedster just in case someone wants a title to it and I always have my monogram on my pictures and I, what I do then is I overlay the sketch that I've done uh, this is going to be used as a guide okay so what I do is I, I don't need the white now the good thing about Photoshop is that there's a, a, a an option in the layers uh, palette which allows you to keep the black but get rid of the white and that's called uh, multiply you see basically it disappear, disappears and you can then just see the, the actual lines that you're going to be using uh, which is quite good because then you can see the background and how it gets built up color wise I don't need it that dark, the line, I just need it as a guide, so I just basically drop it down to quite a low transparency or fill. Around about 20 will be okay. So I can just see it. And then what I do is I build up underneath. I basically put a new layer. And what happens is I'm not going to be able to show you the entire process in this video because it takes me sometimes three days to do these uh, animals. So I'm going to keep cutting in and out when I've done some actual process. But to start with, I'm going to show you how I start painting. Uh, I use this brush. Uh, if I zoom in and then zoom the brush up a little bit, you'll see what it looks like. It basically is uh, for hair. It's for painting hair. But because um, normal, real paint brushes are made out of uh, hair, sable hair, I thought it was a nice way to give the impression that I'm painting with an actual brush. Okay, we're well going to show you how that works. I've created a, a layer, I'm going to call it head. I will start with the head of the animals as well. And what I'm going to have to do now is to build into that uh, picture, the reference picture I want to use, which is this one. What I'm going to do is just copy the head area. Copy it. Paste it in so it's next to the actual area I want to work which you say there and I'm going to put it above the actual image now lots of different colors what I tend to do is I get the brush and if you hold down your alt key you get this little thing targeting thing which means you can sample the color which is nearest to you so I'm going to show you how I do the neck because this is quite a nice color a lot of this color might change as I go through it as well because the head isn't particularly a good colour for the image. So what I do is I'll get my new layer that I've created. It's actually pasted a picture on the head layer, so I'm going to rename it head layer. And this is a reference, so the reference can go right at the top, so I know where it is. Okay, and what I do is I zoom in very, very close. And I basically start painting at 100%. Oops, that should be below the picture. So I follow the line as close as I can. Again, because it's a rough, I don't need to follow it exactly. And if I look at the actual reference picture, I may find that there may be a need for a little bump there or something. So I just add one. It makes it look a little bit more natural. Okay. And then I just slowly, slowly... This may change as well because this is the leg and there may be a little indent so sometimes when I know that's going to happen I tend to go over the line so there's enough give and take on the actual picture. That's a curved part so I'm going to make it so it comes slightly underneath like so. Okay, and I just basically paint around the edge. There's no reason to actually paint the inside part, and I'll show you why in a minute. Okay, so that's basically done as much of that colour as I need, and I follow it around. Follow it around. I'm going to do that bit just in case it's necessary to do that bit. It may be a completely different colour. Like so. So once I've done that, all I need to do, because it's obviously enclosed now, I can actually just tap there with a paint bucket tool and it's basically filled it in. And all I need to do is just literally clean up. This is where it obviously gets exciting because obviously you don't want a flat colour. You want to give it some kind of dimension and this is where the animals start becoming more realistic.
what you have to do is slowly, and this is why it takes three days, is to paint a sample, paint, sample, paint, sample from a given image. Okay, and slowly it will build up into a. See, this toy toy doesn't have a very good eye, and I always tend to start with the eyes. I, I didn't do that because I wanted to show you the thing. So let's have a look at the other pictures of it. See, this has got kind of some nice highlights. If you look at that, it's got some difference in colours. Let's look at the... Okay, that's got a little bit of different colour. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab that one as well. I'll actually probably use this head as the actual colour for the head of the toy toys because it's a lot nicer than the, the one I just copied. No pixels. What do you mean, no pixels? Okay. I'll paste it in. This has got a really dark colour. I'll probably use the colours for the mouse, but the top part I really didn't like, so I'm going to probably use a, a lighter colour. Saying that, you know, things change as I paint, so who knows. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this eye. Alright, so on top of the head I'm going to do a new layer and call it eye. So I can see the eye and put that again up there. And all I do again is take the paintbrush tool. Uh, why isn't it selected? Oh, it's because I've got two less uh, selected. Okay, so I'm going to pick the main colour, which is, tends to be black, and then just paint the main focus area which is the eyeball in this case and what we can do there is to you see there's a very slight amount of lighter tone just below it. That's because the photographer's obviously used white underneath it and it's picking up the whites from the studio area. So I'm just going to bash a little bit in. And then maybe, you see what I can do is to use a little bit of artistic license and add some of my own underneath it to give it slightly lighter as well. And you see then it's got the highlight area, so I'm going to just literally add the highlight areas like so. And you'll notice if you, this is a good thing about this picker is if you move it around, it's got a very fine point. And you'll notice that some of the highlighting around the edge of that white is actually grey, not white. Okay, I'm actually literally going to do this part first in the grey. Add a little bit more edging to there. Okay, and then I'm going to do the white part like so. Okay, now what I can do is just literally tap these bits in, and that's what happens then is you end up with your eye zoom out. Now the thing about this kind of eye, uh, it's totally black so th there's no real life to it, so, but some animals have obviously a little bit of white showing or yellowy white and it gives it a little bit more life. Now I keep the eye on a separate layer, so underneath the eye I give you another layer which is going to be the main head part of the body. I'm going to sample part of this which I like the colour of which to give it kind of a cross reference for this would be probably better around about here so it's kind of like a darkish brown so I can use both samplings of uh, this and that one okay now what I'm going to do is I'm just literally going to paint this like so I'm going to have to move this one out of the way whilst the paint around the pencil line. You 
is black there, that's going to be black, so it doesn't matter. Okay, so I just slowly build that colour up. Now, that's going to be, okay, it's going to have to stay dark. That's another thing you see, snap to that grid, which is really annoying. Even though you'll see on here, for instance, there's a lighter tone here, I'm still going to carry on painting the dark, just because it will give me a little bit of body to work with when I come to actually painting the darker pieces, I mean the lighter pieces. So what I'm going to do after I finish this is I'm going to fill it again and then we'll move on to what I do next is I do the surrounding area of the eye and I slowly build out, uh, quick, hopefully quickly, <laughs> uh, but to try and keep the speed up as much as I can. I've actually developed, these uh, pictures used to take me three weeks to do because I used to do a pencil rendering, highly finished pencil rendering with all the shade on the pencil and then I used to then paint it into Photoshop which also then took a week because I was trying to be concerned about detail and highlight. One thing I've found, I don't know if you can see up here the height and size of this uh, document is it's, it's like around about 15,000 pixels high and about 10,000 pixels wide. Now if you know anything about digital art, that's quite a big document. It's around around about the size, natural size of an A1 or an A0 if you're European you understand that terminology. Uh, so it's big. It could be printed at that size without any problems at all, even though this is a 300 dpi anyway. Uh, you won't have any issues, but the nice thing is, is if you reduce that size when it's finished, everything becomes a little bit more crisper and clearer which is a good thing because you don't have to worry about the detail while you're painting it, which is great. Okay, if you saw the one I've done for the Kickstarter project for the uh, Fenex Fox on the on the bike, it was exactly the same technique that I'm doing now. And if you look at it from a distance or when it's printed at full size, most people have a print that's maybe A2 or A3 size. Because of its reduction, it actually then becomes a little bit clearer and more detailed, which is nice. Uh, so you have to have a good computer to do this technique, because obviously it takes a lot of RAM and uh, memory space and everything. So luckily um, yeah, I'm working on an iMac, which has a good spec, uh, so I don't have to worry too much. Okay, now you see, I'm going to move on to the next bit. Now, if, when, when I did a sketch, well, actually, it's, it has got some of these points here. Look, that's a kind of a shape here. But this one's got more of a lighter shape. I quite like the lighter shapes. So what I'm going to do is kind of a combination of the two things. So I'm going to have the dark areas. But, for instance, on the top area, I'm going to probably build in some of this as well because it's not so nice here, I don't find. And the nose area is very dark for what I want. And this is dark, but it's not as brutally dark lightwise and it's got some nice colours in it there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to build up around the eye. Uh, you see it's got this kind of greying effect. Okay, So what we can do is we can select this and I don't paint everything in detail straight away. Uh, what I'm going to do for instance I'm just going to block in that area You see, even some of the colours like here, it's not even that colour, but I'm going to block it in because that's the general tone that I want around there. If I zoom in now, because I'm not going to use the other colour reference, you'll notice, for instance, if I now change this, the flow and the opacity to around about 70, what's going to happen is the picture starts uh, blending colors that I'm going to be using. So what it's doing is it's taking the actual base color and it's also mixing it that with that with the color I've just selected. So it actually kind of 
doesn't create a such a strict edge and it actually can if you work it very well sometimes you may want to take off the pencil because it gets in the way and this is why it takes a long basically because you've got to blend all this together like so and it's all to do with pressure as well I've got a whack on Intuos uh, touch stylus pencil tablet and what I'm doing is doing two options. When I want to I do a, a dark, strong stroke, I press down on the p tablet. If I want to do something that's just a little bit of blending like there, I, I just basically skip the pen across. And it gets to a stage where you, can, you may not even see what's happening, but there is some colour going down. And if I keep doing it, you'll see it actually then starts appearing. Okay, and that's the two different approaches. Okay, to doing the actual blending and colouring. Most of the time I do a little bit of pressure, but the thing about certain Jewish or certain Wacom tablets is that they have this amazing touch sensitivity. So it depends on how much you actually press down on it, is the amount of uh, pressure it's going to give. Okay, now what I'm going to do here is just, I don't know how long I've been f uh, recording, but I'm going to try and finish around this eye. So, and what we'll do is we'll probably do a release of these videos every day for the rest of the Kickstarter program so you can follow the progress and gives you an idea of how I basically build this up and so you see it's quite a nice pleasant approach to doing it it slowly builds things up some people use certain brushes and they just whack it in in a very uh, simple form um, like uh, when if you're doing concept painting or something uh, but I tend to like doing slow build up which is more natural to the end effect that I want okay which is a realistic looking animal sitting on a tricycle which is something you don't see every day and I don't think of managed to find a picture of a uh, toy toy sitting on a tricycle eventually as well I'll get to the stage where this is nice as well because what we're doing at the moment is we're doing a an animal part to the painting and you probably notice because I talked about it is that there is actually a tricycle involved in this which is a metallic uh, human object and it will be a different way to paint that because obviously it's got a shiny effect and everything. I found the actual model I use from 3, uh, 3D uh, Warehouse is actually a, r a real tricycle that's actually uh, able to buy. So I've actually found some really good reference pictures of these tricycles as well. And they have the sheen, uh, which I've got to try to replicate. And it's a completely different approach to the way I'm doing the actual eye of the I was going to say eye of the tiger there <laughs> the eye of the actual uh, toy toys because uh, it's not so organic well it isn't organic at all is it it's actually a metal object so what I'll do eventually is I'll get to the stage where I'll show you how to do the two different ways of actually painting these objects natural organic objects and metallic man-made objects if you are watching these and you uh, want to try to guess certain things you can actually look at uh, the actual Phoenix Fox which I think has some details or you can actually open up a big version of it on the Kickstarter project if you just click on the image and open it, I'm not sure, uh, but you can actually zoom in and see the, the effects I've done with the actual bike. Luckily it's one of Steve's own bikes, Viral Skeptic, and so he gave me quite a good reference picture. Uh, but it's all to do with replicating as close to possible you know, the actual real object, which is which was fun. But the thing is there is this thing, as, as I said before, called artistic license. I don't think anybody's expecting me to do a, an amazingly perfect rendering of it. 
especially in three days of this uh, bike that I was given. I could do a, a fantastically natural rendering of it but it would take longer and th these pictures aren't really about high detail, they're about realism with a natural feel to them. So what I'm going to do, see there's a little bit of light there, okay. Now we nearly finished the uh, surrounding area. What I'll do after I've done that is I'll give it a pause and I'll come back in the recording when I've done a little bit of the head as well. So I can show you how much I've actually developed. And I'll give you kind of an indication of the time as well because people think, you know, you just sit down and draw these and they just appear within 20 or 30 minutes and that's not the case. You know, I've actually been doing this. I can see my clock on my computer. I've actually been doing this for possibly 15, 20 minutes now and it's still just, just the eyeball so you can see why they take so long to do and I couldn't actually put you through the process of actually looking at a video for three days solid you know, I'm not Andy Warhol doing the, doing the Empire State Building and sh recording 24 hours of the life of the Empire State Building to make you want to sit and watch this but it is an interesting point that I'll pick certain parts of the process and show you. We'll keep cutting in and out and you know how much I'm sampling this as well. We'll keep cutting in and out so I'll show you the way I do certain parts of the picture. Now don't worry about the edges of this because you'll see on this it's darker. We'll move into that area in a minute. But that's how I'm using that picture which is not exactly the same but I'm using the the lighting and the colour of the actual actual object, which is this tortoise, to show you how to make the eye. And if you zoom out, like I said, let's just get rid of the two reference pictures so you can see the actual animal. So if you zoom out, that looks like a relatively real looking eye. Now if I zoom in, you can see the actual brush strokes and everything. And it's very rough, and this is the nice thing about this brush I'm using. It looks like I'm actually painting with a paintbrush in oils or something and it gives you that natural organic feel. Okay, So I'm going to do is I'm going to pause there and but when I come back I'll probably have the front end of this nose done. We'll move on to the mouth and I'll show you how I do the mouth. Okay, so what you can remember is I was going to do the top part of the head, not all of the head but just the top parts of the nose and everything and you'll see that I've managed to achieve that and from a distance it looks like a relatively realistic looking toy toys. If I zoom in you'll see it's a combination of all the painting and everything. If I take off the uh, pencil line you'll see it probably looks a little bit better as well because the pencil tends to give a little bit of fuzziness to the actual painting area. Okay what I'm going to do now is the mouth area which is this bit here. Okay. So what we'll need is the actual one that has the mouth, because I'm going to use direct referencing on this. Okay, I'm just going to move it right next to it so we can get the full scope. And what I'm going to do, because the mouth goes underneath this bit, I'm going to just temporarily put another, you see that's the head. I can't actually <laughs> temporarily, because I've actually painted the on top of it. So I'm going to do it directly onto the head section. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do like I did before, which is to block some colours in. So I'm going to choose that colour. What I'm going to do is create a marquee around the head because we're going to be going quite close to the edge. Hide it so you can't see it. So when I paint here, for instance, it doesn't go over the edge. All right. Now what you'll see here is this effect. I'm just going to go all the way over this bit. Doesn't matter if I paint bits that aren't actually that colour. Like so. What I've got to do is to follow that line. I'm going to do this bit later. I've just got to add the extra part to it to harden the edge like so you can see
see, I've been painting since oof, for two hours now. So you can see how this can actually take up a whole three days to paint. And this is the fast version. Okay, I've not even completed the head and it's taken two hours. Now, saying that, I do do other artworks. I do caricatures and I can paint those in a full caricature in a day, which is a working day, eight hours. Uh, sometimes they're quicker. But because of the amount of detail involved in these ones, it does take time. That's a, just a sad, inconvenient truth about it all. Okay. So when I do ask for large amounts of money to paint one of these, it's not because I just want to rip people off. It's because they actually do cost me time and I, I want to be recuperated in the amount of hours I put into this. Uh, and you get a quality product at the end of the day, I think. You can't deny that this doesn't look nice. Well, maybe <laughs> you don't like that kind of style, but if you like the style, you can't say it's not... Uh, quality piece of artwork because it's uh, a it's a high quality because of the size and the d DPI but also it prints well and it has the time and passion involved in actually making it look good okay so you get a great deal out of uh, getting me to do these paintings uh, even the one where you get the individual unique picture it's still quite good value. Uh, it's six hundred dollars for the book and the actual picture, simply because if you think about it, I take three days to paint these, maybe more sometimes, depending on what the actual animal is. And if I work ten hours a day, let's say, for instance, I charge. twenty dollars an hour seems reasonable for a skilled job times ten that's how much is that that's two hundred okay times three days there you go there's your six hundred dollars straight away you see so what you're doing is you're basically getting a very good piece of artwork for a relatively cheap price in effects to actual manpower and it's in that case, for the actual uh, commissioned ones, it's going to be unique because I won't be selling them, and I won't be—they won't be in the book. They won't actually be distributed anywhere else apart from the person who actually hires or contributes that amount of money to have a, a unique picture painted for them. So you're getting a really good deal. Plus the fact I love doing this stuff as well. Uh, I don't know what it is. I just when I start painting, sometimes I can actually go on for over 16 hours sometimes just painting away because I want to make, for instance, in this case, this tail look as good as it can be. That's my aim, and if I'm not happy, I keep painting and painting until it gets to the be the way I want it to be. Which is part of the process, I suppose, being an artist, you know, perfectionism. Uh, nothing's perfect, but, you know, you can try and aim for perfection. And hopefully this is what I'm doing with these pictures. Uh, if you see the whole series I did, actually, uh, you'll notice that they do become slowly better and better over time. Uh, when I f did my first one, it was very raw, and uh, that was over six years ago. And... It even today I look at it, even though it's one of my favourites because uh, it was my first ones. I look at it today and I keep thinking, wow, you know, if I could have done it the way I do it now, how much better it would be. Uh, but this is the thing, when you practice art, you do it over time, you become better and better at it because you, you, you're actually doing live work, but it's also practice for you because you improve your skills as, with time, which is a nice thing. And I've got to this stage today. Actually, we're doing relatively good work uh, at a good pace, at a good amount of realism. Uh, 
in a relatively short amount of time. Uh, as I said before, my first series, I was actually doing these for two or three weeks. There's some videos on my YouTube channel actually where I'm showing you how I do the pencil artwork and everything. And it seems laborious, literally laborious. Uh, you know, going through every little part of uh, each picture, shading the pencil in to make it look hyper realistic in a pencil form, and then scanning in and putting it into Photoshop. So what I have done is, like I said, I've improved the uh, techniques, uh, which has improved the time schedule and everything, so I can actually make more of these quicker. Uh, and that's what it's all been about, you know, actually learning how to improve your skills. I think that's important to everybody who knows how to draw or wants to learn how to draw is to understand when you start, it's not how you necessarily end up. Uh, there is a process involved in learning all this stuff and uh, it will show in the way you do your work from one day to the next. Uh, hopefully it will become part of what's known as your style. I think people have told me that you know these pictures are very distinctly me. You know, when they see them on the internet they know it's me that's done it. Uh, that helps in one sense because it helps friends and uh, fans point out uh, counterfeits for me which I get a lot of. Uh, so people identify with me and I can actually say oh, you know you can't say that's not mine because I can prove to them that I've done hundreds, of, well not hundreds but a few other, about 70 I've done I've done 70 other ones and they look all exactly the same so you know you can't say that it's not mine which is good in that sense uh, but it's not nice having your work taken because they they see some value in it, whether you know they think it's a wonderful piece of artwork and that's why they take it and they think they can make money out of your hard work, I don't know, but sometimes you'll find, and I found this out, that you know, for instance one of my pictures involves a Volkswagen camper, you know, it's a very popular vintage car and some people have actually stolen it and used it, not because of the, the beauty in the artwork, it's because it's got a <laughs> a Volkswagen camper on it and they think that that's going to sell you know which is a real shame in my mind because you know I prefer them to like the actual artwork maybe they do like the artwork but you know the motivation was oh put a VW somewhere and the people will buy it because they might have a VW and we can make money and that's not the way it should be uh, it's very frustrating in that sense you know you don't want to draw and I'll pick pictures that don't sell. You know, so you try to think of an idea that might sell, or you think it should sell, and then other obviously people out there see it as a opportunity for themselves to make some money out of your hard work because you're actually providing them with a lucrative opportunity because they see the fact that people might want to buy this, and so they. steal it, put it on the web and make money out of it, yeah, not put, actually put the hard work in themselves, which is a really, really sad shame, you know, I don't, I didn't start the uh, art game so people can make more money out of it than me, you know, I want to feel that, you know, I can at least make a, a living out of it, and internet thieves stop you from doing this. You know, I, I think they make more money out of my work than I do sometimes. Whether it's true or not, I don't know. But, you know, you see so many counterfeit versions everywhere. People manipulating your artwork and doing bad things to it. Which you wouldn't agree to if they asked you. So why the, f why the hell do they do it in the first place? Yeah, uh, which is a shame. Uh, you know, life isn't about abusing people and unfortunately the internet makes it that art abuse has become rife 
simply because the way the laws and the way the internet works it's very hard to find out who these people are get them prosecuted especially in your own country because m most of the time they're in some foreign country and that's the frustration so well, how do you do it you never draw again because you know you're never going to get rid of these people or do you just carry on doing what you love because because it's a passion for you now you see there you go whilst I've been rambling on about counterfeits and pirates I've actually managed to do a relatively good mouth there okay and So it looks roughly the same if I zoom out. Yeah, looks very nice. Now I'm going to just do the teeth up here. I think they're teeth. I assume that toy toys have teeth. So just put the base colour in like I said before. And obviously because the roof of the mouth is above and it creates drop, drop shadow, I have to um, build in the... Well, there's going to be some shadow there as well, but it's going to also be upper shadow, simply because it's above the teeth. Right, so, so I'm going to just get some more tones that are available. Like so. And as it goes back it's going to get darker so I'm going to see if I can try and get hold of a highlight colour. Blend that into there. Now this part of the get a lot darker. it's darker. You notice I'm constantly sampling as well. I don't just choose one colour from part of the tooth and say oh, I'm going to paint everything that colour. I actually realise that what the eye can't see is that there's uh, thousands of different variations of colour going along this tooth. Like for instance there you see you see it's changed slightly even though it may not look it. Okay, let's put that back in. What I'm going to do is just manufacture my own dark a bit here because I think it needs to be a lot darker than it is. Just there. And there. Okay. And there you'll notice that there is a kind of a separation of the teeth. I've got to give that kind of feel there. Okay. And that's how it seems to work for the mouth area. Obviously I'm going to do this bit here, I'm going to pause, do a little bit more to the mouth and I'll come in just as I start doing this part here. Okay, Okay, as I said I'm going to pop back in after I finish the mouth. There you go, that's fully finished mouth. If I zoom in a little bit, you see it looks quite nice. I've still got a little bit there to do if you'll notice on the actual... Which one is it, that one? Okay, there's these teeth things you'll see. Right, I'm going to just put those in. What you can do here, because it's behind basically, I can actually make a new layer. Okay, like that. And I can then not worry about been actually going over any of the painting I've already done, which is quite nice. I assume this is the other side of this, but it looks a bit different. The uh, tortoises aren't symmetrical. <laughs> okay, there we go. You'll notice 
notice as well, if you look at my pencil work, it's not actually, a, for instance, it's not a tracing. I actually do just stare at this picture and build up an image based on what I'm looking at instead of just literally copying it. There's no point in copying it, you want because you want to add your own little flair to the picture. Sometimes some of the animals I do, they need to have to be hand-drawn because they've got certain attributes that you'd never find in a, a real live animal. Like I've actually done lions sitting on vespers and things like this, you'd never find a lion sitting on a vespa. So I'm not just trying to find a lion sitting down, like a human. Uh, so doing the actual pencil work is actually an important part of the process and if you're a designer yourself you'd understand that sketching out concepts and things is very important. Uh, gives you scope and ability to change and modify things as you go along. And it's such a passionate thing to do, I just find it really exciting actually doing pencil work. It helps you uh, get rid of a lot of the built in tension you may have and also the pencils smell lovely if you can get a nice set of pencils it's nothing like the smell of pine to make you feel nice when you're drawing okay so that's that bit done all right once you've finished with that you can flatten it down to the other bit which is this bit you see so i'm just going to flatten that down and what you'll notice is actually you'll need to look just a little bit of blending between those two lines. Right, so just to soften it. Okay, so all we've got to do now is this little bit here. You know, so I did a little bit, but uh, I'm going to just finish it off so we can just round up this first video. So you understand how I've done most of the head. When we come back to the next video, the head will be complete. And we'll move on to some of the other aspects which may need discussing like the uh, the shell is going to be quite complicated I think because it's got so many different facets and uh, colours and everything but it doesn't matter we'll just take it as it comes like everything else I'd paint and you'll see it building up slowly if there's any kind of comments you want to add or ask questions just put them as comments on these videos and uh, I can respond to them. Uh, it would be nice to know what people think. Uh, if you've got any questions about how I do certain things. I may miss pointing out certain things I do in my actual process that you may want to know. Just ask. I'm quite open to tell you how I do things. I can't tell you how I draw or the way I draw because it's obviously built into me, <laughs> me as a person. Uh, this is something you have to find out for yourself, but techniques can be taught, shown. So if you need to know anything, just let me know and I'll try to explain the best I can. But, you know, I've been using Photoshop, for instance, for over 20 years now. Uh, I actually had a copy of 2.5, uh, which is the third generation. Uh, so it's been a long time I've been using it. It's uh, been quite in entertaining. The things you have to learn as you go through the process. Uh, and as I said 20 years ago, I was pretty novice at it and I wasn't as good as I am now. And so I can always say to you, you know, practice makes perfect and it's a very important factor. Don't think, you know, you're going to jump on a computer and become the best computer artist in the world straight away. Some people have it, some people don't. And what you have to learn to do is to understand the technology, understand its limitations, understand your limitations and build up a successful process using all those criteria. Now I don't paint like certain people simply because I know I can't. So I use my own understanding of how I can do things and make my own art the way I, I can using the technology. It seems to work for me. And you tend to get good 
results and the more you practice. Like I say, obviously I do this daily, so even doing live projects is practice in my book. So I'm going to pick some there because it looks like it needs to be a little bit lighter than what it is. Okay, that seems to go down to there. Doesn't go up. Right, so that's that bit done. Just want to darken this area a little bit. And there's a little bit of darkness there. What I can do is, you notice sometimes I stipple, but you can't see me actually doing it because it doesn't show on the Photoshop brush action. What I'm doing is I'm just tapping the screen, or I'm just tapping the Wacom tablet, and what that does is it doesn't actually make strokes, it gives you kind of specks of area which can be good if as building up technique instead of actually doing solid colours you can pat over the top because it's on uh, an opacity it allows you to literally build up the tones and everything and some parts like this for instance needs to have a lot of strong detail in a solid line that appears down there okay you notice it's slightly different to the one I'm actually doing uh, it doesn't matter I'm gonna as I said build my own version I don't want to copy the picture exactly so what you'll notice is there is slight differences That's what makes it interesting and fun. Sorry, I say fun in a Midlands accent. I'm from the UK. And uh, certain parts of the country they speak in a different way to other parts. And I say things in a Midland accent. Like bus, fun, etc. Okay, so I'm coming to the end of what I want to do for the actual mouth area. And I'm going to just do that bit there because I want to create a kind of a bridging effect to the next stage, which is to build this area and this. And that seems to be the bridging colour, this kind of dark colour. And finally, I just gotta oh, it's more dark there and then it blends into this. Sometimes because the way you paint with this opacity, the actual depth of the colour you're picking doesn't appear on the picture, which can create a problem because you want it to have a the same kind of strength and depth so what you have to do sometimes is to actually make your own colour like if I select that it doesn't paint as dark as that so what I can do is I can actually literally just choose it darker and then what we can do is build that in and you'll see then you have the darkness that you require that you've thought you picked when you actually picked the colour Okay, so I think I'm done on that part of the mouth as well. I'm just going to splash some darker bits there. A little bit there. Okay, you'll notice there's a little bit of... This doesn't need to be, it's just detailing, because if you're drawing your own version of it, it doesn't need, need to have these little points. They're just things that happen on the animal. So if you want to individualise it, you don't need to copy the reference image exactly okay but there you go all right so I'm happy with that so I'm going to stop there and what we'll do in the next well by the next video which I'll be doing in a couple of days this all this uh, all this head area will be complete okay so what we'll then do is we'll move on to possibly doing this piece this arm and this under shell I can show you how I can complete that. So I hope you've enjoyed it so far. Uh, 
what we're going to do is to obviously get this completed as quick as possible. But if you're interested in uh, this artwork, you can f help fund the project, or you can actually ask for a, or request a uh, commission piece, which will be a unique animal of your choice. Riding a bike, it, well, it may not even have to ride a bike, but uh, you can choose that on the Kickstarter program, which will be shown at the end of this video. Thanks, and I hope you see you next time.